Coming up this week, the outcry over the water contamination in Michigan. Texas looks at the legalization of marijuana and open carry in the San Antonio Stockyard and Rodeo. Hi, welcome to Lakefront. I'm Jessica Ortiz. There is a nationwide outrage over the contamination of water in Flint, Michigan. The town's water supply went from Lake Huron to the Flint River, known to its locals for its filth. High levels of iron and lead have been found in the city's water supply. Nearly two years ago, the, the state decided to switch the water sources during a financial state of emergency. The National Guard sent some of its members in an effort to assist with the water crisis. The teams are providing local residents with water bottles and filters. The state is investigating on how to handle this crisis. Um, this is something that nobody should have to deal with. Everybody should have clean water. And it's just a travesty when you, you know, it's ironic when you live in the Great Lakes state and we don't have access to clean water. In light of President Obama's immigration plan, the Supreme Court has decided to give the president a final shot at implementing his ideas. President Obama's plan will help to prevent over 4 million undocumented immigrants from possible deportation. The court's agreement to hear the appeal will also add fuel to the already heated debate over illegal immigration. The case is set to be heard in April, followed by a decision in June. Texas is prepping to license people to grow and sell marijuana with a few strings attached. Last June, Texas Governor Greg Abbott signed a marijuana legalization law creating the Compassionate Use Program. The Department of Public Safety is in charge of implementing the rules for the program. The Texas law went to effect January 10th and authorizes the sale and distribution of low THC marijuana products only for medical purpose. The state is about a, a year from fully implementing the first licensed dispensing organization. As the San Antonio stock show and rodeo tradition continues this year, one new law will not become a part of that tradition. On Tuesday, it was announced that the rodeo will not allow the open carry of firearms. Kim Hintz, a spokeswoman for the rodeo, said, Firearms have not been allowed on the grounds in the past and therefore we are continuing with that policy. For more information about the rodeo, it can be found at www.sarodeo.com. Police are still investigating events that led to the suicide of an Alamo Heights teen. Malak, a sophomore, committed suicide January 4th sparking a nationwide controversy. Malak's family said he was bullied on social media for months before the suicide. Criminal charges for those involved in the case have yet to be identified. Two parents faced their worst nightmare on Tuesday morning after finding out that their son, four-year-old, was shot himself in the head. The four-year-old was paying a visit to his grandparents' house in Cypress, Texas on Tuesday and was urgently taken to the hospital. He was pronounced dead on Thursday. An investigation is still taking place on how he had access to the gun. Security forces ended an attack at the university in northwest Pakistan in which 19 people were killed and 17 injured. All four suspects died in the three hour long battle and the attack happened in the midst of a sudden spike in militant violence despite a year of relative peace. Coming up after the break, we tell you about the evidence of a new ninth planet. Also, we hear a student's opinion over a controversy with the Oscars, and JC will update us with entertainment. Researchers at the California Institute of Technology have found evidence in the outer solar system of an object that could appear to be a real ninth planet. It is said that the planet has a mass about 10 times of Earth and orbits about 20 times further from the Sun. The gas giant is thought to be almost as big as Neptune, quite possibly with rings and moons. 
Researchers hope that this inspires others to start searching for the planet. The Oscars is facing a controversy that continues to heat up. The hashtag OscarsSoWhite appeared on social media hours after this year's nominees for the award were announced. For the second year in a row, no person of color were nominated in any of the acting categories or best pictures, prompting some to call for a boycott. Actress Jada Pinkett Smith and other stars are adding to the list of people who will not be attending the ceremony. The boycott is intended to get Academy voters and members of the industry to recognize the lack of diversity in film. Now that the topic of racial disparity in the Oscars is back, in the news, reporter Chancellor Makanjuala asked students for their opinion. Will Smith's wife, Jada Smith, is calling for a boycott for all persons, um, for the people of color because nobody, no person of color, including her husband, was included or was nominated for a best actor or best supporting actor role. And since there's a lack of diversity within the Oscar nominations, do you think that that's a good way of showing that the Oscars should be more diverse? Should, should there be a boycott? For, of the Oscars? Well, I don't necessarily agree with the idea of having a boycott for, you know, the racial discrimination because it just depends on the actors that are there, the movies they were in. It all depends on them. And if it just so happens that the actors that weren't chosen were of, you know, of that race, then that's just, that just gives an example of how their ability is to be an actor. And, you know, if they did a good job on that movie, then of course they should, you know, get recognition for it. But um, I don't know if there should be a boycott just, just for that. Obviously there's a gap of progress between minorities and white population. Um, and so we're just trying to catch up as minorities. And so I understand where the, the backlash is coming from, where, you know, we want more diversity. We want to be able to see LGBT, uh, black, African, um, you know, Hispanic communities, Asian communities to be out displayed in this, these films. But at the same time, I think feel, I feel like it, people or films should be character, um, judged by the character of that individual. I think it's time. It's time to, you know, speak up. And although we've been speaking up, it's time that we get, you know, the results that we want. And so I think it's, it's, it's a good thing to boycott, you know. Any, anything we want, we need to fight for. And so I think it's a good thing that we're fighting for it. And eventually, hopefully, we'll get what we want in return. I completely find it unnecessary. I mean, if they deserve it, they deserve it. Who's nominating? Are there people of color nominating? Probably, I mean, it depends on if they deserve it. If they deserve it, they get it. And that's, that's all that matters. So the combination is one, two, three, four, five. That's the stupidest combination I ever heard in my life! Can you take a guess on the most common passwords? Yahoo released an article with a list of the most common used passwords. 123456 was ranked as the top one, and surprisingly, Star Wars took the lowest with a rank of 25. If you would like to see if your password happens to be on the list, just check out the article. Now here is JC with This Week in Entertainment. Another year come and gone, and it's finally time to get back into the swing of things. Some people go back to work, some of us go back to school, and I get to go back to being overly critical and sarcastic. Welcome back to the entertainment section. I got some new media that we're checking out today, so let's get started. And action! All right, I'm going to ask you a series of questions that may or may not be rhetorical. Would you want to build a house on the polar ice caps? Do you have the ability to communicate with polar bears? Have you ever wanted a movie to succeed so bad, but instead it crashes and burns into the ground? If you answered yes to any of those questions, well, first off, where did you learn to speak polar bear? Because I'm struggling with Spanish over here. And second off, you'd have Norm of the North, a movie starring an anthropomorphic polar bear trying to save his melting ice caps from condo developers. How does he go about that, you might ask? Well, by traveling to New York City, of course. And he was sure to bring his wacky lemmings along, which are basically this movie's minions from Despicable Me. They're simply there to make jokes and not move the plot along at all. I had such high hopes for Norm. I really did. I tried to believe, but in the end, this movie isn't, isn't good. There's basically no reviews of this movie, and the ones that do exist only confirm my fears that this movie sucks. Norm of the North, unfortunately, is in theaters now. In southeastern Europe, a group of humanitarian aid workers attempt to bring a villager's water supply back to life. Ironically enough, the problem with it is that a dead guy is in there and they gotta get him out of the well. He's just kind of, you know, 
hanging around in there for whatever reason. Unfortunately, tensions are high as the humanitarian workers are trying to help the village. There's more than just enough complications to bring to the table. The local government is interfering with their efforts and the local townspeople are threatening violence or something. There's not enough rope to fish out the dead body of the well. Look, this, the movie A Perfect Day, which comes out this weekend, needs a better trailer. I had to look at the synopsis for this film like five times before I realized what the central plot is about, which I can sum up in about one sentence. A village won't touch dead people and would rather die from first than just move a dead body. So people have to come and do that for them. The characters in this movie could be cardboard and be more alive. The conflict is, well, stupid and the plot is paper thin, but apparently it's based on a true story, so there's that, I guess. You know, having a real life story doesn't immediately make your story interesting and it takes a little bit more theatrics to make a story interesting. Kind of like Moonwalkers. This movie shows the interesting side to the Apollo 11 landing, one which we haven't really seen explored in film. We all know the conspiracy theory that the moon landing was faked. Well, according to this true story, we can see what kind of production could have started those rumors. The movie follows Hellboy and Ron Weasley as they try to fulfill NASA Chief's request to stage a moon landing because Chiefy thinks that this mission might fail and would rather lie to millions than just say, well, that didn't work. Throughout the movie, we see the complications of making a staged film landing as they only have a week or so to make it happen, and their last hope is a drug addicted washed up director. I'm actually looking forward to this movie. It looks like it has a good blend of humor and action, and it does have some pretty good actors. It's gotten some mixed reviews, but I'm probably going to see it when I get the chance. Moonwalkers is in theaters now, but when the movie's version of the stage landing releases, we'll never know. So if you've ever walked outside, you've probably heard of the Mario Brothers. The dynamic duo has been rocking video game world for over 30 years now, and with that comes a variety of spin-off titles. From Mario Kart to Mario Power Tennis, Mario has done it all, including Origami and the Paper Mario series. And to no one's surprise, I love the Mario games. They're quirky and comical with ridiculous plots that are always a joy to play through. Almost as much as the Paper Mario games, I love the Mario and Luigi RPG games too. And now the moment I've been waiting for for a while now has come at last, Mario & Luigi Paper Jam. That's right, the fusion of the Mario & Luigi and Paper Mario series has come to fruition as the latest 3DS title. If you own a 3DS, you owe it to yourself to pick up this game when it comes out today. I promise this game will be a cut above the rest. Like, like paper cut? No, forget it. And that's a wrap for this week's entertainment section. I hope to see you back here again next week. And cut! An estimated 300,000 people attended the Martha Luther King Jr. March in San Antonio on Monday. The nearly three-mile march took place in the east side of the city on MLK Drive. Local and international residents participated in what has become one of the nation's largest marches to commemorate the civil rights leader. Dr. Julieta Kubina and Olu alumnus Kirk D. Mask have been named to the San Antonio's Business Journal's 40 Under 40 list for the 2016 year. This award highlights individuals under 40 who are rising stars in the community. Dr. Kavina serves as the department chair for the criminology and criminal justice here at Olu, and Mask is a partner with the accounting and investing firm. The two will receive their awards in February. Congratulations. The Olu cheerleading squad is, will host a cheer and dance youth clinic on February 20th in the UAC. The fee is $35 per child and $5 discount for each individual child. The package includes performance during halftime of the men's basketball game. For more information, please contact the cheer squad at cheersquad.olusa.edu. The deadline to register for the spring 2016 graduation is January 29th. Students who plan to participate in the main commencement need to apply online through WebAdvisor. P paper applications are also available to fill out at the Registrar's Office located in the Water Center. And now for our sports updates. Hi, welcome to Lakefront Sports. My name is PJ Fields, here to bring you an update. This week, men's basketball faced Houston Tiltson on Tuesday and won with a score of 84 to 70. The men had several players score with double digits. Joe Jackson was the leader with 17 points. Next is Darian Brown with 15 points. Then with Dovrak with 12 points, and last but not least, Phelps with 10 points. The men are traveling today to Marshall, Texas to take on Wiley College at 7.30. Tomorrow the Saints will go on to Hawkins, Texas, Texas to face Jarvis Christian. As of right now, the men have a current standing of five wins, two losses in their conference. Women's basketball has set a record yet again. The Saints have been ranked number four in the national NAIA poll. This is the highest rank any university team has been in all of San Antonio. 
The Saints have won the last 15 games, which takes them to the largest winning streak in history. The Saints won their game against HT on Tuesday with a score of 69-84. to Leading scorer for the Saints was Taylor Hamilton once again with 21 points. The current record for the team is 7 wins and no losses in their conference. The women travel with the men to play Wiley tonight at 5.30 and go on to play Jarvis tomorrow. As always, check in with us every week to get updated about the Saints. That's it for sports. See you in the stands. Thank you, PJ. That is all for this week. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. See you next week.